Good morning, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shemaer, and you're listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. All right, it's a new week, therefore a new Torah portion. We are in the Torah portion called Behar, which means on the mountain, and it's taken from Leviticus chapter 25, verse 1, all the way to chapter 26, verse 2. A fairly short Torah portion uh, with it within this uh, leap year of Torah portions, and uh, so today we are in Leviticus 25 verses 1 through 13, and I'm just going to focus on the first seven verses. Now, these are some interesting um, governmental land type things that God has instituted within Israel to keep Israel successful, prosperous, free, and safe uh, for everyone, and uh, where there's equality for everyone. All right, so here we go. It says, then Adonai said to Moses on Mount Sinai. That's where we get the Torah portion. Bahar is Mount. So Adonai said to Moses on Mount Sinai, speak to B'nai Israel, the children of Israel, and tell them when you come into the land which I give you. So we're talking about 40 some years down the road, right? Because the children of Israel have not inherited the land. That's going to be done through Joshua. When you come into the land which I give you, the land is to keep a Sabbath to Adonai. Oh, wow. People are to keep the Sabbath once a week. Not only that, but the land itself is to keep a Sabbath. When is it to keep a Sabbath? We're about to find out. Verse 3 says, For six years you may sow your field, and for six years you may prune your vineyards and gather in its fruit. But in the seventh year, there is to be a Sabbath rest for the land, a Sabbath to Adonai. You are not to sow in your field or prune your vineyards. You are not to reap what grows by itself during your harvest, nor gather the grapes uh, of your untended vine. It is to be a year of Sabbath rest for the land. Now, why is this? Well, today in modern agriculture, you know, crops are grown year to year to year, and sometimes crops rotate. And the reason that crops are rotated sometimes every other year is so that the nutrient balance in the soil is is shifted and renewed. And sometimes they have to put chemicals into the ground in order to maintain the productivity of the soil. But they wouldn't have to do that if they just went by what the Bible says. The Bible says is if you let the land lie fallow every six years in the seventh year, the land lies fallow. Naturally, these these uh, lost nutrients for from this constant growth um, of produce over six years will return, and the the soil will be refreshed and will be revitalized. Just like us, when we take a Sabbath rest once a week. Physically, mentally, and spiritually, we're exhausted by the end of the week. We rest, and we get rejuvenated and recharged, and boom, we're ready to go for the next week. Well, the same holds true for the land. The land may not have a consciousness, but the land has a life of its own. It gets tired as well when it's constantly plowed and constantly planted and constantly reaped. The soil gets devoid of nutrients. So to prevent this, the Lord commanded Israel to say every seven years, let the land lie fallow in the seventh year. Give the land a Sabbath rest. And you know what? One of the reasons that Israel was taken away into captivity into Babylon, among other reasons, was because they refused uh, to give the land a rest every seven years. So God says, I'm going to pay the land back for all the Sabbaths that it missed because of you. So you're going to be in exile for 70 years. Pretty interesting stuff. All right. So verse six says, whatever the Sabbath Whatever the Sabbath of the land produces will be food for yourselves, for your servants, for your maidservants, for your hired workers, and for the outsider dwelling among you, even for your livestock and for the animals that are in your land. All its increase will be enough food. So this kind of explains how, you know, how where are you going to get food if you're not going to plant and reap, you know? So uh, not only will you have stores from the previous year, you can kind of glean and allow the poor to glean, though you don't harvest and you don't cultivate and prune and plant during the sabbatical year. So uh, it's kind of neat that uh, every seven years there is a sabbatical year, and this is still observed on the Hebraic calendar today uh, within Judaism. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. Shalom and God bless. Psych! There's a part two with Coffee with Chris for Sunday. Forgot to add something here. So let's continue on with uh, verses 8 through 13 because there's something very important I want to point out here. We just got through discussing the uh, uh, every seven years the land takes a Sabbath rest. So it says in verse 8, you are to count off seven Sabbaths of years, seven times seven years so that 
the time is seven Sabbaths of a year equals 49 years. Then on the 10th day of the seventh month on Yom Kippur, you were to sound the shofar blast and you were to sound the shofar, which is a ram's horn, all throughout your land. You are to make the 50th year holy and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It is to be a jubilee to you when each of you is to return to his own property and each of you is to return to his own family. So uh, every seven years is a sabbatical year. Seven times seven equals 49. The 50th year is considered a jubilee year. Do you know what this is saying here if you read it very carefully? In the news, you're going to hear all over the place this buzz about the Great Reset, the Great Reset. We're going to go to a cashless society. You will own nothing and be happy. And we're going to reset everything and we're going to build back better. That is the world and Satan's counterfeit to God's jubilee. What God is saying here in this jubilee is that every 50 years, there is a great reset. The economy is reset. All property, all land, all income, all inheritance reverts back to its original owners so that you can start over again. So it's a very, very beautiful thing, a very beautiful concept. So in verse 11, it says that 50th year will uh, be your jubilee. You are not to sow or reap that which grows by itself or gather uh, from the untended vines since it is a jubilee it is holy to you and you will eat from its increase out of the field um, in this year of jubilee each of you will return to his own property so we see that satan is always trying to imitate that which god does and institutes and if you read the word of god you'll be able to catch these things in, in, in real life and in real time much much better so now when you ever see anything on the news about the great reset that's coming you'll know that it is a counterfeit jubilee and that, that man always tries to improve on what god uh, says and does and they can never do it uh, because God's plan is always perfect. So let's remember that. Okay, for real. Thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day and a great week. Shalom and God bless.